with ten blades in my hand, here comes the Sun Chaser! Greetings everyone. I am delighted to have you in attendance today, as we welcome one of our newest friends from the Shu Heng Sapphira Zone, one of the strongest modifiers in Ether Gazer, Ten Blaze Jin Wu. Jin Wu is a fire DPS unit. She belongs to the Tian Yuan faction of characters and uses Divine Grace as the resource to execute her skills. Her basic attack has five sequences and will grant her up to six blaze fire mark after the final sequence hits a target. A total of nine blaze fire marks can be accumulated. Her dodge skill will trigger a crow's scorch attack at the attacker. While in Sunfade state, this effect can only be triggered once every four seconds. Skill 1, Demon Slayer, delivers multiple blazing strikes against the enemy. While in possession of blaze fire marks, each successful hit from this attack will consume one blaze fire mark, and for each blaze fire marks consumed, Jin Wu will gain a stack of fire feathers. For each Fire Feather she possesses, her skill damage is increased by 2%. This can stack up to 12 times. In addition, for each Blaze Fire mark consumed, her Divine Grace is increased by 5. If Skill 1 is cast while Jin Wu is in possession of 9 Blaze Fire marks, consume all marks to gain 9 Fire Feathers, 25 Divine Grace, and deal an additional instance of fire damage to the surrounding targets. Skill 2, Evil Crusher, summons a ring of flames to deal fire damage to all enemies within its area of effect. Jin Wu will obtain up to three blaze fire marks for successful hits with Evil Crusher. After Evil Crusher is cast, it will change into Demon Incinerator. Casting Demon Incinerator will consume three blaze fire mark to summon a larger flame ring around Jin Wu. This attack will not interrupt her current action and grant up to three blaze fire marks on successful hit. Skill 3, Sun Chaser, consume all divine grace and leap into the air to enter the Sun Fade state. While in the Sun Fade state, Jin Wu gains super armor and dodging no longer consumes the dodge meter. Jin Wu will obtain one stack of fire damage for every one divine grace she consumes to enter the Sun Fade state. Each stack will increase her fire damage by 0.1% until she exits the Sunfade state. Sunfade state can be maintained by using her aerial attacks and dodging. While in Sunfade state, skill 1 is changed into Crow's Scorch. When in possession of at least three blaze fire marks, consume said marks to fire a flaming slash at the target. If nine blaze fire marks are present, all marks are consumed to perform the attack and Jin Wu gains 80 Divine Grace. If less than 9 marks are present, gain 20 Divine Grace for every 3 marks consumed. While in Sunfade state, skill 2 is change into Crow's Fire. Casting Crow's Fire consumes all Divine Grace to ignite the target in flames, imprisoning them for 2 seconds. In addition, the targets will have their physical wind and fire resistance lowered by 0.1%, for every one Divine Grace consumed. Casting skill, three while in Sunfade state, will consume all Blaze Fire marks, increase skill damage by 3% for every mark consumed, and perform a dive bomb on the surrounding foes, ending the Sunfade state. Her ultimate, Ten Blaze Incandescent, unleashes the power of the sun to deal AOE fire damage to the surrounding foes and grants a set amount of divine grace for every blaze fire mark she possessed. In addition, when Jin Wu or her allies cast her ultimate, she gains 20% of her ultimate charge. The ultimate cannot be cast while in sunfade state. If Lingguang is in the party, their ultimate skill chain Vermilion Sunrise will instantly grant Jin Wu the max amount of Divine Grace she can possess. The team gains the Scorching Sun buff. In addition, Jin Wu's fire damage is increased by 15%. Jin Wu has two possible playstyles. One is when she is Earthbound, and the other is while she is Airborne in Sunfade State. Since Sunfade State is where most of her damage output is delivered, our goal should be to get into Sunfade State as soon as possible. 
When dealing with low HP enemies, you can do this immediately upon entering combat. However, against high health targets, elites and bosses, we want to enter Sunfade State after activating the buffs provided by her Blazefire Marks, Fire Feathers and Divine Grace Consumption. The game plan for high health targets and bosses are as follow. At the start of battle, your goal is to gain 9 Blazefire Marks. We can achieve this fairly quickly by activating skill 2, followed by its enhanced form. Then perform a full rotation of your basic attacks. Once you have acquired the 9 marks, you'll want to cast skill 1 to convert those 9 Blazefire Marks into 9 Fire Feather Stacks. This will increase your skill damage by 2% for each stack consumed and grants you 25 Divine Grace. From there, use skill 2 to gain 3 Blazefire Marks and immediately cast skill 3 to enter Sunfade State. The Divine Grace will be consumed and converted into bonus fire damage. From here, simply lay waste to anything that moves. Your buffs will remain active until you exit Sunfade State. In situations where you are surrounded, this can be achieved with even greater ease. Start by casting skill. Two in the midst of the enemies. Hitting enough targets will instantly grant you the nine stacks. From there use skill one to convert your stacks to fire feather stacks. Then skill two enhanced to recover the blaze fire stacks. Go into sun fade state and go ham. The more enemies are surrounding you the better. When it comes to functors, the free-to-play Tianyuan functor is more than serviceable. This functor will provide up to 12% bonus attack, skill damage, and ultimate damage at base transcendence. All you have to do is keep your modifying level at S rank or higher, which is a very easy requirement to meet. Of course, her signature functor, Otherworlder Baifang, is going to be her best in slot. The functor allows her to gain blazefire marks when entering or exiting Sunfade state. Reduce the amount of hits required to obtain a blazefire mark while in Sunfade state to 3 and allows demon incineration to no longer consume blazefire stacks. In addition, every time blazefire stacks reach 9 marks her crit rate, divine grace charge rate and max capacity are increase. Since she gains a damage buff proportion to the amount of Divine Grace she consumes, this functor allow her numbers to get pretty naughty. Overall, the functor will make it easier for her to gain and maintain her buffs, making your rotations a lot smoother, as well as boosting her damage by quite a bit. For Ether Codes, 3 Red is going to be best in slot for players using both the free-to-play functor and her signature functor at low transcendence. This will allow you to get an attack buff for every one Divine Grace you possess. Passively gain one Divine Grace every second while in Sunfade state and reduce the cooldown of Crow's Fire. When consuming Divine Grace you will gain a skill damage buff for each one Divine Grace you consume, up to a maximum of 200% of her Divine Grace. There is a downside to Red Code, which is lowering the skill damage of her teammates. But since she will be played alongside support characters, this shouldn't be a problem. 3 Yellow is also viable, but it requires High Functor Transcendence to be better than the Red Code. This code's main draw is in the insane 280% crit damage it gives. If that sounds too good to be true, that's because it is. You see, it provides this in exchange for your crit rate. Running Griffin's Pride Sigils, Okuni and Heimdall as teammates can help alleviate the crit rate lost. And of course, having a high functor transcendence will provide her with even more crit rate from your functor, hence the transcendence requirement. Speaking of sigils, Dazzling Sun of Ancients is the newest sigil set released with this update. This set will increase fire damage by 10% and crit damage of outgoing fire damage by 30%, making it our best in slot fire set for Jin Wu. Slot this into slots 1, 3 and 5. For slots 2, 4 and 6, Acheron's Obol will provide both bonus attack and crit damage. Its effect can easily be maintained while we are airborne by using skill 2 on cooldown. 
If your build is missing crit rate, you can replace Acheron with Gryphon, especially if you're going to gamble with Yellow Code. But to get the most damage out of your Jinwu, you'll want to stick with Acheron. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, here they are. For slots 1 and 2, we want two power-up melee and two executioners. The melee mod, because we are going to be spamming autos while in sunfade state, and the executioners for bonus damage against enemies that are below 40% of their max HP. For slots 3 and 4, we want two EM flux and two telepathize force field ones. Two fluxes because Jin Wu is extremely evasive and mostly attacks from range, meaning we will rarely get hit, allowing us to maintain the bonus damage from flux with ease. And the telepathize force fields will passively be active just by running three matching ether codes. For slots five and six, we want two kinetic mods and for the last two, if you have Phantasmal Dawn Hera Pick 2, Absolute Zero. If you're gonna run her with Ling Pick 2, Ultimate Equation. If you plan on running her with Yellow Code, you can pick 2 Evolution Particle 3 to buff Skill 3's Dive Bomb ability. If none of that apply to you, pick 2 Cognition Iterated. On a side note, Current Decay may be a solid pick here, but in all honesty, I'm not really sure what is really classified as a control res. If you know, Please clarify for me in the comments below. This configuration should be a fantastic setup. Even if you plan on skipping Ling. If you are planning on running her with Ling, this setup is the one I like to run when I run her with my Ling. It is extremely potent and is the build I use in our showdown video against Hades, Anubis, Ryugiri and Izanami. I'll link the video below if you haven't seen it. When it comes to team comps, Jin Wu, Ling Guang and Geng Chen is going to be one of her best premium team comps. Naturally, Geng Chen's spot can be filled by Hera. But since this team is already so strong, Hera might be more useful elsewhere. The sigils and code set up for support Ling Guang should be on screen now. You can copy that for your Ling Guang if you plan on pulling for her. Keeping up with the triple S rank comps, Flame Tear and Kagutsuchi, have an extremely potent skill chain, making them ideal teammates for a mono pyro team. Since Tier is delayed, Kagutsuchi plus Nuada will also make for good mono pyro teammates. And lastly, Ukuni and Heimdall are valuable teammates for Jin, especially if you plan on running her with yellow codes, since they can both provide her with more crit rate in addition to their damage buffs. Set Heimdall's codes to yellow and Okuni to red. In later updates, the 50% reduction effect on the crit rate buff she shares with her teammates will be removed thanks to her Synchron upgrade, making this combo even more potent. In closing, Jin Wu is a superb character. Even after almost a year since her debut, her place in the meta has yet to dwindle. If you have been waiting for the right time to get into Ether Gazer, there is no better time than the present. Tell me. What better way is there to welcome a new admin than with a free gift from the sun? Good, eh? Good, eh? Good, eh? Good, eh?